This is the best district in USACE. And, you know, I don't, I would be hard-pressed to find someone who's going to disagree with me or argue that point. And, and the statistics bear it out. It's not just me saying it. I mean, the things that you do with all the, the, the well, we had the PRT of the year, we have the PAO of the year, we have the RM of the year. I mean, those things don't happen in bad organizations or organizations that aren't the best. So all of you should be very proud of the great things that you're doing out here every day and the difference that you're making. And I'm proud of you. I know Colonel Magnus was, and I know General Yenter and soon to be General Cox, our new commander, is very, very proud of you also. Do, you, do you all understand the change that's about to come down in terms of who we work for? You know, we, we work for TAD, right? But at the same time, right now, my boss is essentially General Yenter, who's the uh, uh, use for Alpha engineer. But in about two weeks, he's going to transition that over to General Cox, who runs TAD. And General Cox is establishing a new office forward here called TAD Afghanistan. And Colonel Ed Curtis, some of y'all may know him from Savannah and POD, is going to be in charge of TAD A here. And he's not my boss. He's just a conduit that's easier for me to get to General Cox and he is going to work some of the interference with some of the higher headquarters here. It should essentially make us a little bit better, uh, help us operate a little bit more efficiently here. That's what our hope is. Everybody got that? All right, so why are we here today? Well, I always like to do this, you know, it's, and it's easier to talk to you in mass. I prefer to come around and talk to you independently or, you know, separately, but it's just easier to get everybody together right now because of the tempo here. And y'all have some pretty dang high tempo ops going on. You know, you don't, I know all of you come from the district, you weren't probably working quite as hard in the district back home as you're working here, right? You know, maybe a few more hours here, maybe a few other things. But so uh, it's just easier to get everybody together at one time. What I like to do, though, is go over the things that are important to me. And Nancy sent them out on my behalf here a couple of other nights ago. And uh, so you all have a copy. I don't care if you have it with you or not. Now, here's how I do things. If, to me, if it's important, I learned a long time ago as a district commander, if I write it on a piece of paper, and it's more than a page or two long, nobody reads it, right? So what I found out as a district commander in Fort Worth a couple of years ago is if I put it on one page PowerPoint slide, all of a sudden people will start looking at it and maybe hang it up in their offices and things like that, and I know my message is getting out. So that's why you got two copies of the same thing there. I just found that that works a little bit more, a little bit more uh, effectively when I do things like that. But I like to talk to you about what's important. First of all, let me tell you a little bit about myself. For those of you who don't know, um, Graduated from West Point in 1983, so I'm getting pretty old, a little long in the tooth now as an Army officer. Um, my very first boss was General, now Major General Jeff Dorco, uh, the guy for Milcon, DCG for Milcon up in the office. I've worked for him four times. Did a company command in uh, 101st Airborne Division. Uh, did um, my brigade three times, was in the 1st Infantry Division. Spent some time in Bosnia when I was in the 1st Infantry Division. Uh, under Jeff, General Dorco again. Uh, let's see, as a battalion commander, commanded the 91st Engineer Battalion in the 1st uh, CAD Division, 2nd Brigade Combat Team, 13 months in Iraq in 0405. We were not engineers. We had about a 400-man battalion with tanks and infantry and stuff, and we fought a lot. Had more IEDs than the rest of the 1st CAD Division combined. Um, I don't like IEDs. I've been shot at a whole bunch. I lost five kids in combat. I never want to lose anyone else again. Um, Think about them all the time. Um, did my brigade command, which is a district command at Fort Worth, we had a tremendously challenging program. Some of you probably helped us out with a lot of it. We did the Fort Bliss build out, about a $4.5 billion program. Fort Sam Houston expansion there, the medical training facility, as well as uh, BMC Hospital, about a $2.5, $3 billion program. And then... Uh, the southwest border fence, where a lot of you worked on that, Eric Elders and a couple others worked with us on that, putting fence along the southwest border to stop some of the things that are crossing there now. That was a pretty high-stress project there. Did Hurricane Ike, ran the recovery office. Some of you may have come over and worked for me there for a while. Ran that for about a month before Galveston was able to get back on their feet and take it over. The, then I gave a command in, what year is this? The 09, I went to Forces Command, where I was the Force Comm Engineer. And the Force Comm Engineer's job is to make sure that all engineer units in the United States and the Army are trained and prepared to deploy to combat. And then we use what we call a patch chart to determine which units we're going to come over here to theater to conduct operations. So I worked with all the engineer forces over there. And then, like I said, General 
I mean, just out of the blue. I didn't know what the heck I was going to do. I'm, I got 28 years of service right now, getting getting close to retirement, thinking about retiring this summer. And when General Temple called me up, did not expect that, asked me to come over and do this. And I thought, well, you know, one more opportunity, you know, to, to command one more time. And I love being in command, so I told him I'd do it. I have a wife, Carolyn, back at home. Uh, we've been, married, been married 23 years now. Moved 13 times in the Army in our 23 years. Love her very much. Miss her already. I have two boys. Names are Nolan and Ryan. That's intentional. Um, <laughs> my oldest son, Ryan, I have a beautiful grandbaby, about 14, 15 months old now. Really, really beautiful little girl. And then uh, my youngest son just graduated from West Point this year. He's an infantry officer at Fort Benning right now. He will be over here in about April or May. And I would spend 10 years here if it meant my kid didn't have to come over here. But that's the way we do things in the Army, and that's why we're here. All right, so what's important to me? This chart. You are all in the United States Army Corps of Engineers. That means, as a result of that, you are all responsible to adhere to Army values. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. I expect that from you. You should expect that from yourselves. You are the best district in USACE. So the best district in USACE does things the right way. And part of the right way is adhering to Army values and those things which are important to our Army and make it the great machine that it is. Who? And I say who a lot because who knows what who it means? It means whatever you want it to mean, all right? So I say who a lot. So um, I do believe, though, that, that we are the best district in USACE. I believe that we are a team, and that teamwork is very critical. Well, you can't get things done if we don't have good teamwork here. And so, and, but teamwork doesn't come easy. You know, you got to practice it. And so, you know, and, and a lot of you guys have come over here volunteered for positions and been thrust into positions, things that you've never done before in your life, and you're doing outstanding jobs at it. But we have to find ways. It's my job to help you find ways to make you better so you train even while you're in combat. Even as a battalion commander, we train while we're in combat. So the way you conduct yourself is critical because you are the best district. I've got to help you make sure that you know how to do your job efficiently. Uh, I don't like ing words. Who knows what ing words are? Ing words are not useful. Ing words are things like, I'm working on it. I'm thinking about this. I'm planning on this. Ing words are not useful. Words that are past tense. I, I did this, and here's where we're going. You know, even going has an ing word, but uh, <laughs> I'll take that one. <laughs> but, you know, as a general rule, when we have meetings and things, we need to make sure that we're talking about what we've accomplished, not what we're going to do. Because what we're going to do sometimes... You know, in getting things done. Because what are districts about? What are, what are, why do United States Army Corps of Engineer districts exist? One more. Who can say it? Build. Build, but execution. We are about execution. Districts exist to execute projects. Not to award projects, not to, not to uh, design projects, but to execute. Execute means you have done everything from award to build to design to construct. But at the end of the day, you have turned over a building to your customer, and they're able to move into it and do whatever they got to do. That's what we're about, execution. I don't like finger pointing. Don't like playing the gotcha game. You know, don't go into a meeting and say, you know, if you're holding on to information. You know, and somebody says something, and you say, oh, well, I had a meeting yesterday, and I found out this. That's playing the gotcha game. You know, that, that's not useful. You know, I like it. When you hear information, you send it to other people. We have this great thing called email. Anybody familiar with that? You know, you can hit CC to everybody out there. And I don't like doing that and don't encourage you to do that. But if you have information that someone else needs to know, send it to them. Don't hold on to information. In the Army, when we have our tactical operations centers, talks, we put a sign up in there. It says, who else needs to know? So when you get information into the talk or data or analysis, you figure out who else needs to know this, and you send it to them. So you all need to ask yourselves that question all the time, too. Who else needs to know this? Because holding on to information, playing the gotcha game is not good, okay? So I need help with that. In case some of you haven't figured it out, we are at combat. Well, this is a combat organization. You guys got to remember that. Sometimes units have a tendency to get lax after they've been in contact in combat for a while. At what point, how many of you have been here about 90 days? Raise your hand. Okay, what we found out in the Army is that when we run operations and a new unit comes in, 
When do they start to get their most casualties, you think? At about the 90-day mark. Do you know why? Yeah, you start to get complacent. So, you know, don't, don't get complacent here. Don't set patterns. The, the five kids I lost, four of them were because we made mistakes, did things, set a pattern, and the enemy picked up on it. We didn't realize we were doing it till afterwards, but when we went back and did the analysis of it, we found out that's why. So don't allow ourselves to get complacent. But at the same time, don't allow yourself to get complacent, you know, in your work office too and just continue to do things the same way because that's how we've always done it. You know, that's not useful either. We have to find new ways to do things to expedite what we're all about. And what are we all about again? Execution. So help me find ways to make this office, this, this district more efficient and execute even better. Hey, I'm a big believer in safety. Our photographer almost got in trouble this morning. What did he do that would have got him in trouble? He was one step away from being in trouble, right? As we know, the yellow book says, you don't get on the second from the top rung of a ladder when it's out there. He was okay, though. He didn't, he didn't quite get that high. But you guys, I expect you to know, and I expect our field guys to know what the yellow manual says. I'm thinking this must be hard for you because you're broadcasting this, isn't, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Moving target is harder to hit. Always remember that. <laughs> anyway, I understand the yellow manual, and I expect you to follow us established safety procedures here. I do not tolerate safety violations. Now, how do you stop bad things from happening? You stop bad things from happening by every now and then just stopping, looking around and say, where is my next accident going to be? When I was a district commander in Fort Worth, I'd go on project sites and I'd talk to the, you know, the, the, the contract and the construction firm out there. I'd pull their, their uh, foreman or somebody over, or the PMs, and say, okay, where is your next accident going to be? Oh, sir, we ain't going to have no accidents. Oh, nothing's going to happen out here. That's bull bullshit. Where is your next accident going to be? And we'd look around and they'd say, well, you know, if we don't do something over here, we're going to have an accident pretty soon. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? And they'd figure out how to fix it, and we fix it, and you stop accidents from happening that way. So I'd like all of you as you walk around, just every now and then look around and say, where is our next accident going to be? And then fix it. Bring it to somebody's attention if you can't fix it. But let's, let's make sure accidents don't happen. You know, it's, you don't want to lose people for, for the wrong reasons. You know, when I, when I was in the, the, the command of my battalion in Iraq, we had a saying, if we lose a soldier today, we want it to be because the enemy got lucky, not because we did something wrong. And sometimes, like I said, the four or the five, when we went back and figured it out, we had done something wrong. We patterned ourselves and we gave him an opportunity to hit us. So we've got to make sure that we're not doing things wrong intentionally. It's okay to make mistakes. You know, this is a, there is a lot of stress on almost all of you out here right now, right? I mean, you're doing, you're, you're, you're working longer hours. We're in a confined environment. I mean, there, there's just a lot of stress. The tempo is very high. Everybody's working hard, trying to do the right thing. Sometimes you're going to do the wrong thing. And it's going to be a mistake, and it's not going to turn out right. That's okay. I don't mind mistakes when you're trying hard to do your very best. That is okay to do that. So, do, you know, no one needs to be concerned about making mistakes. At the same time, when you do make a mistake or if you have a little sore thing out there, a little pimple that's starting to, to, to form up, don't, don't hold that back. You know, sometimes you're all very professional. You know, you volunteered to come over here because you have that kind of mentality, that kind of personality that likes this kind of stressful environment and likes working this kind of, you know, in this kind of pressure. Some of us just thrive better under pressure, which means all that you're very professional and you take what you do very seriously and you feel like I can solve anything. And so what happens is a little pimple starts to develop. You say, I can fix this because I am the engineer of the year to be or something like that, right? And so you're like, I'm going to solve this. And, you, and it gets a little bit worse and it gets a little bit worse. And guess what? You can't solve it. And so then you go to your supervisor, and of course he's very, he or she's very professional, and they say, we can solve this because we are very good at what we do, and you can't. And after a while, that kind of goes up, and by the time it gets to me, it's no longer just a little pimple. Now it's this big, ugly, festering wound out there. You know, it's infected and everything. So don't hold on to bad news, and don't let little things that you can't solve just fester around out there. If you need help, ask for help. There are things that I can get accomplished just by not because I'm smarter, prettier, taller, or anything else than any of you out here, but just by virtue of the fact that I wear this. 
I can get things done. I mean, it's just a fact of matter in the Army because I have a colonel's thing on my chest here. I can do things that maybe y'all can't. So be smart about what you try to solve, and if you can't, don't hesitate to bring it up through your chain of command. Um, hey, guys, three areas where I do not have tolerance for them. We have to be very careful. One is security. I'm not comfortable with some of the security things that we're doing here. We've made some changes already. We're going to make more. Um, we got some things that we got to fix. I do not tolerate security violations, and I don't mean you guys doing things, but I'm, 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 I'm worried about gates. I'm worried about our guys in the field. I'm worried about sending out MRAP patrols on their own. I don't think that there's a need for that. I'm worried about the amount of security that we have when we roll out the gate in our vehicles, on a helicopter, rotary wing. You know, my biggest concern is what put a couple of, we got th how many of y'all been on the helicopter here with us? How many, how many long guns do we have in the helicopter when we go out? The three, the two door gunners and one, one other guy, you know. Well, I'm carrying a long gun all the time. The sergeant major will start to carry his all the time, but I'm going to, you know, I want to, my biggest concern is that we lose a rotary wing aircraft that goes down from mechanical malfunction in Indian Territory. You know, and when you go, the best way to be effective in Indian Territory is to look like the baddest dudes out there. You know, and that, that you, you know, the enemy doesn't hit people that look like they can fight back. So we got some things that we want to work on, and we've got some limitations on PAX count and the, and the helicopter and other things. We're, we're going to figure this out, and we're going to figure this out soon. So I've told all our guys, especially the field guys, no tolerance for security issues out there. Fix it. We do these things called risk assessments. Even when you're in combat, you do risk assessments. You all ever heard of them? I'm a big believer in using them. I used them in combat the first time. I've done combat operations, changed the way we executed major attacks based on doing a valid risk assessment. Um, I believe in them. I expect my field guys to do them all the time. I expect you to do them all the time when it's required. And when you go out the gate, we need to be doing, make sure we're doing the right things there. Uh, accountability. I need to know, and I say I, as I as in all of us, need to know where you're at all the time. And I, I don't talk about being a babysitter, but if you decide at 1900 at night you want to walk across the street to Camp Eggers, Somebody needs to know at 2100 at night or 2300 at night that you are back in your room somehow. We got to figure this out because anybody, there's nothing worse than getting kidnapped. You know, an American soldier or American civilian getting kidnapped, you become a high priority target and you become bait for a lot of bad things. So accountability, and I saw this in Iraq where I have convoys coming through constantly they get hit by an IED and the convoy would just go on and leave a vehicle with American soldiers in it and civilians in it sometimes burning there not knowing if they're alive or, or dead and so you know my guys would roll up on the site and find folks in there and, and to tell you that's that's just bad news and then where I was at in Iraq we had guys kidnapped all the time and that's just bad bad stuff so accountability is very important so you know sign out boards in your office Checking in at night with folks, but I need to know that y'all are okay all the time. And I don't want to find out, oh, some, such and such has been missing for a day now, and they're over at Camp Eggers hanging out or somewhere else just hanging out. You know, that's, that's unacceptable. So please be accountable, but also be accountable for your actions. Again, you're the best district in USACE, so I expect that your actions reflect that you're the best district in USACE. So be accountable for yourself there, too. Don't tolerate inappropriate conduct. You know, we have general order number one, right? Everybody needs to know what that is. We need to get signs up, hanging around, remind people. We've had a couple of violations of it here recently. No more. That's unacceptable. You know, inappropriate conduct. You're at combat. You can't, you got to have good order, good standards, good discipline in combat if you're going to be successful and go home safe. We have only lost, as far as I know, one core employee the entire time we've been at war, right? Let's keep it at that. So let's do all do the right things and make sure that we're acting the right ways. 